My name's Tom. Recently, I got married to someone very special to me. But it wasn't a smooth journey to get to this point. I'm planning to share the story of my wife and me in chronological order. My wife and I were both hired at the same company. Both are the same age, having both joined the company as college graduates. My wife's name is Margaret. Back then, we were just colleagues, and I used to casually call her Margaret. After our orientation, we ended up in the same department. We were both in sales, encouraging each other to do our best, grinding day in and day out. At the time, I had a girlfriend. We were getting along pretty well, I'd say. Then, in late April, I got a call from my buddy Joe. Joe is an old high school buddy of mine. We went to different college but would occasionally hang out, just the guys. I got a call from Joe saying, I got some couple tickets for an amusement park, want to bring our girlfriends. I'd never been on a double date before, so it was a bit awkward, but it seemed like it could make a good memory. My girlfriend was also up for it, so we decided to go. On the day of our double date during the long weekend, we met up at the location. I got out of my car and shouted, Hey, Joe. Joe raised his hand, Hey, long time no see. We both knew that we had girlfriends, but we'd never actually met them or even heard their names before. Feeling a bit jittery, we introduced our girls. This is Margaret, nice to meet ya. The moment I saw the face of the girl stepping out of Joe's car, I said, What Margaret? Tom, is that you? We both looked at each other and couldn't help but laugh. Turns out, my buddy Joe's girlfriend was none other than my co-worker Margaret. No way, I knew you were in sales, but Tom and Margaret, you're at the same company. Joe was equally shocked and raised his voice. It was such a coincidence, all we could do was laugh. Riding that wave of laughter, we all acted like kids running around an amusement park. Then at lunchtime, they said they had something to tell me. Joe and Margaret were planning to get married in June. The wedding date was still up in the air, but they said once they'd saved up some cash, they'd like to have a wedding. So, come a lucky day in June, Joe and Margaret tied the knot. Margaret kept her last name. I hear that ever since they got married, Margaret's been making Joe's lunch every day. I was privy to all these lovey devay stories. But as for me, I got dumped by my girlfriend that fall. Ever since she heard Joe and Margaret were getting married, she'd been mulling over our future. I'd been thinking about it too, but what she said hit me hard, I can't see a future with you. I asked if I'd done something wrong, but her response was vague, something like, it just doesn't feel right. Let the past be the past, I thought but it was a tough pill to swallow. Joe and Margaret were the ones who consoled and encouraged me. Despite being newlyweds, they'd invite me over and lift my spirits with some drinks. Best friends and co-workers, including myself. The three of us started handing out more once Joe and Margaret got married. I thought this enjoyable dynamic would last forever. Then a new year rolled around and spring came along. It was the spring marking our second year at the company. One Monday, when work hours had already started, Margaret was nowhere to be found. Is she unusually off work today? Just as I was about to ask my boss that, my phone rang. It was an old high school buddy. Sorry to bother you at work, but I just got a call from a friend. Without any pleasantries, he sounded rushed. But the next words from him left me in shock. Joe, Joe had an accident. It was a call to tell me that Joe had passed away this morning. What, Joe, you're kidding me. What do you mean he's gone? I was rattled. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The accident happened last night. Joe was in the passenger seat of a friend's car and an oncoming car, apparently a dozing driver, ran into the car Joe was in. He was rushed into emergency surgery, but passed away in the early hours. I attended Joe's funeral. Joe, 
Why did it have to be you? I couldn't stop the tears. The harsh reality was too much to take. Margaret held it together at first but broke down crying during the service. I couldn't bear to look at her like that, so I covered my face with a handkerchief, trying to stifle my sobs. Afterwards, Margaret took a month off work. By the time she came back, she had lost a lot of weight. When she returned, she came to my desk. Tom, thanks for all the emails. Sorry for worrying you. Margaret smiled, but I could tell she was still forcing it. Even I can't believe that Joe's gone. That's why I've been so worried about Margaret. During her time off, I have been sending her emails at night. Are you eating properly? Getting good sleep in your bed? That's all I could really ask in my emails. But Margaret told me she appreciated those messages. Being alone at night was tough for her. When she got home, the loneliness hit her hard and she couldn't get anything down. When she got an email from me, it made her think that she had to at least try to live a normal life. Even if it was just one sandwich, she managed to eat it. Seeing Margaret like that, I couldn't bring myself to say, I hope you get better soon. All I could do to make her feel even a little bit better was to invite her out for dinner after work. I've tried a couple of times with colleagues who are also worried about her, but she declined, saying she's not up for it yet. But we kept asking her. And eventually, she accepted our invitation. Her appetite was small, but seeing Margaret say the food was good and actually eating a little made me feel somewhat relieved. On our way back from dinner, as we live in the same direction, Margaret and I walked down the night streets together. Then Margaret started talking about Joe. He is in the cemetery now, and all that's left at home is his portrait. I'm really alone now. Margaret started to cry, her tears flowing freely. All I could do for her was offer her my handkerchief and rub her back. Her sorrow from losing Joe is beyond my own. With that thought, I found myself at a loss for words. I'm sorry, thank you. Margaret had been crying for a while, but she said that and started walking again. I had initially planned to only walk her part of the way home, but I couldn't bear to let her walk alone in her current state. So, I ended up walking her all the way to her house. There, I lit a candle in memory of Joe. Pictures from the funeral, along with cheerful photos of Margaret and Joe, adorned the room. Seeing that, I couldn't hold back my tears either. I'm sorry for crying when I should be the one encouraging you. My words got choked up in tears. It's too soon, isn't it? We had so much more ahead of us. It's frustrating, but I bet Joe is the most frustrated of all. Margaret said that as she wiped away her tears. But I have to keep going, or else Joe would worry, she shared, even though she might not be fully ready yet, she's trying to cheer up a little bit at a time. I wondered what I could do for Margaret. All I can do is listen to her and take her out to eat. That felt so inadequate. Margaret had said that she finds it easier to cope while working but it seemed like she was putting on a brave face. Yet, she managed to get through the first anniversary of Joe's passing, and while she still had her down moments, Margaret was slowly getting her spirits back. During this time, the support from everyone remained unchanged. A few of us from work kept inviting her out to dinner after work. I continued to walk Margaret back to her house. On days when we got home early, I would light a candle in memory of Joe. One day while I was walking Margaret back to her house, she asked, Why do you always walk me home? I don't want you to be in danger if something happens on the way home, right? There are dark streets. Besides, if something happened to Margaret, Joe would be furious. I don't care if it's none of my business, but I have to protect you, whom Joe cherished so much. Otherwise, he's going to get mad at me in my dreams about what I'm doing. I say all this with a bit of a chuckle to lighten the mood. Margaret said thanks and she laughed along. Time passed and we reached the third anniversary of Joe's passing. Both Margaret and I were more involved in our work than ever. 
On exhausting days, we continued to unwind by going out to dinner with some co-workers. Then one day, as I was walking Margaret home again, she said she had a small favor to ask. You see, the light bulbs in my fore and dressing room have gone out. I tried standing on a step stool, but I just can't reach. Could you help? To Margaret, who seemed a bit embarrassed to ask, I cheerfully replied, Sure thing, no big deal. Don't sweat the small stuff, I added, and Margaret smiled as if she were really pleased. Once inside her house, I replaced the light bulbs for her. Thanks so much. It's surprising how much you need a tall person sometimes, she said. I joked, well, good thing I could reach the ceiling. Otherwise, that would have been embarrassing, huh? Margaret laughed and said, funny thing is, when Joe changed a light bulb in another room, he was barely reaching it, trembling all the while. I laughed back, ha, huh, well, I'm way taller than him. Yeah, this ceiling would be a stretch for Joe. Margaret suddenly burst out laughing. I stepped down from the step stool, folded it up, and handed it over to her. But just then, our fingers lightly touched, and our eyes met unexpectedly. The laughter that filled the air between us abruptly ceased. However, I looked away as if I felt nothing. That's when Margaret softly said, Hey, why are you so kind? Hearing that, our eyes met again. For a split second, I felt my heart skip a beat, but I said nothing and just looked at Margaret. You're always encouraging me, and you're always concerned. You're too kind. I might get the wrong idea. Margaret spoke slowly, and once again, I felt my heart flutter. But then she said, just kidding. Sorry, forget it. Geez, maybe I'm a little tipsy today, and went on to put away the step stool as if nothing had happened. However, I found myself chasing after her, and before I knew it, I was hugging her from behind. A moment of silence passed. I could feel the warmth radiating from Margaret from my arms. And then it hit me. The feeling that I wanted to protect Margaret was there, and it wasn't just as a co-worker or as a friend's wife. I was falling for Margaret. But the moment I realized this, my buddy Joe's face flashed through my mind. So I loosened my arms that were wrapped around her. Sorry, I may be a little tipsy too. I apologized to Margaret. Margaret shook her head, saying no, and turned towards me. A tear was visible in her eye. I lifted my gaze slightly. And it landed on Joe's framed photo. Without a word, I walked up to the photo and lit in candle. In my heart, I whispered, sorry, Joe unable to say anything else. Then I told Margaret, see you at work tomorrow, and left her house. The next day at the office, Margaret and I acted as if nothing had happened. But from that day on, every time our eyes met, it felt as if we were swallowing something. I suspected Margaret felt the same way. These days continued for a while. And then one day, while I was walking Margaret home after having dinner with co-workers. An unusual silence filled the air. The words we'd been holding back since that moment had been gradually growing stronger. I stopped walking. Margaret noticed and stopped too. Then, I finally told Margaret how I felt. Is it so bad if it's me? I want to be by your side, in any way possible. That was my true, sincere feeling. Margaret looked at me and after a moment of silence, nodded, yes. She had accepted my feelings. But it wasn't the end. On my day off that week, I went to a certain place. I stood in front of Joe's grave. This was important news. I wanted to say it here, where Joe was. Joe, I've come to make a resolution. I'll make Margaret happy, and I'll take good care of her on your behalf too. So please, accept that I'll be the one with her. I promise, I'll protect her smile no matter what. I said that, then bowed my head in front of Joe's grave. How long I closed my eyes and bowed, I can't say. Suddenly, I felt a gentle, warm breeze blow by. I lifted my head. 
and looked at Cho's grave, asking, Do you forgive me? I posed the question like that. Then another warm breeze blew. It felt like Joe was answering me. That warm wind had a kindness to it that reminded me of how Joe used to speak. I said, thank you, and bowed my head deeply once more. I promise, I'll absolutely keep this vow. I swore that to Joe. As I left, I turned towards Joe's grave one last time and said, Joe, I'll be back. With that, I walked away. A decade has passed since then. We had just recently observed the 13th anniversary of Joe's passing. Margaret and I have been together ever since. Living in a committed relationship, much like a common law marriage. On a day that came after that, Margaret suddenly said she had something important to discuss. It was on our way back from visiting Joe's grave to honor his memory. It had become our custom to pause and rest at a park before heading back home after these visits. That's when Margaret suddenly turned serious and started speaking. Tom, it's been a while, and we just had Joe's 13th memorial service, so I've been thinking it's about time. I know we shouldn't rush to conclusions, but we need to think about our own lives too. I'm sorry for everything up to this point. Thanks for being there for me. So, here's this. In Margaret's trembling hand was a marriage license. I had Margaret tightly. Don't apologize. I'm the one who said any form of us is fine, right? Margaret broke into tears, nodded yes, and forced a smile. Hey, don't cry. If you do, I'll feel like I've broken a man-to-man -man promise. I cheerfully said that to prevent Margaret from crying any further. Margaret laughed and said, What's this man-to-man -man promise you were talking about? Well, never mind that. I had Margaret again and looked up at the sky. Joe, I promise to keep my word to you. I'm sure Joe is watching over us, happy to see Margaret smiling. And so, we became a married couple. Two years later, a new life was born into our family. A cute little girl who looks like Margaret. And on the day our child was born, there was a meteor shower. It was a special day for other reasons too. Joe loved stargazing. Both Margaret and I knew that. So we couldn't help but think that he was sending his blessings for a safe childbirth and our happiness. The child was safely born full of energy. And she has since filled our lives with her adorable laughter. To ensure that the family we're committed to protecting can always smile. And while cherishing our loved ones as they deserve, we plan to keep living life in our own way.